My favorite parameter to see in any filter plugin is a morph parameter. And usually most filters say that they morph, but they don't really morph. And what I'm talking about is like if it has uh, smooth interpolation between multiple different filter shapes, um, that's the good stuff. And so far, I, there's only two that really do that that I'm aware of. One of them is built into Ableton. That's what we're going to be looking at first. So I'm just, I'm just going to pull up a quick synth patch. This is just based on one of my templates. And uh, let's just make this a little bit more interesting by adding a bend parameter. I'm going to uh, map this real quick to our X and then map the tune to our Y. Okay, that's fun. So what I'm gonna do is open up, um, it's called Auto Filter. By the way, I know this is an old version of Live. If anybody uh, at Ableton is watching and wants to hook me up, wink, wink. Um, I could really use a fresh version, but <laughs> if, uh, if we look at the filter here, you can see it starts in low pass mode. By the way, you have to select this one with the morphing setting. And then you can smoothly go to band pass, high pass, then notch, then low pass again. It just sounds really, really cool. I you to sweep between those. Um, and Particularly with this one, the order of the filters, like that it goes low pass, band pass, high pass, notch is really, really cool. And I wish with like the other one we're going to look at later is with um, uh, the rift filter. And you can't choose the order of the, of the individual ones that's morphing between. You just get what you get. You don't get upset, but I do get upset. We'll get to that in a second. So I'm just going to load up an LFO and I'm going to map this to um, our frequency so that that's moving around. There we go. Um, I might even offset it a little bit so it's mostly centered around the center frequencies. And then I'm gonna load up a second one. Actually, I can probably just uh, duplicate this guy. And um, so the frequency, we're gonna map this to the morph setting. And that's uh, sounding pretty cool. So, that's a very simple version of it. It's just a way to add like movement um, to any sort of source. We're using a synth source in this case, but you can put this on anything, of course, and get like really cool fluid movement. But you can tell um, when it's like low passed and at a low frequency, like it sort of loses all of its characters and just becomes like a very low tone, right? <laughs> Which can be cool sometimes, but other times maybe I, you know, Maybe I want more uh, high frequencies poking through. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to group these together. I love how easy Ableton makes all this stuff. Um, there's some of this was a little bit more easy to do, like building chains like this in Reaper. But anyways, I'm gonna put in the chain and I'm gonna do is I'm going to duplicate it. So now we have two parallel morphing filters going on at the same time. It sounds pretty sick. So it's like maybe one filter is um, low passed at any given moment, but the other one might be high passed. So um, it just sounds pretty cool. And I'm going to do that maybe even one more time. And they all have their own uh, random sources that are separate from each other. So they're all like moving in their own way. And I don't know, I think that's pretty cool. But we're not gonna stop there. What you could do is uh, we can just take this whole thing. We could even duplicate that. So we have two sets of parallel filters running in serial.
I think that's pretty cool. Um, I've just put like maybe even because we're here and we're in Ableton, so why not just put the original OTT on here? I think that's pretty sick. For this next variation on that same theme, um, we're gonna be back over in Reaper. Let me load up an instant of Faceplant. I just want to get like a basic sort of distorted, noisy kind of patch. You know, your typical sine wave plus noise, plus like a lot of distortion. Uh, go in here, just so that we have something for our filters to chew on. There we go, that's getting pretty good. I'll just put my little L3 patch on here. Nice. So we're just gonna use that as our starting point. And on top of that, I'm gonna go ahead and add this Rift filter. I don't know if they're still doing this. It's a part, if you look like in the bigger Rift plugin, it's like a minor part of it. Oh, did I just crash Reaper? No, we're good. It's just tiny. <laughs> um, I don't know why I made it tiny mode, but uh, yeah, it's like mostly a distortion and like a feedback thing. But if you look in the bottom right hand corner, it's the same. It's the same dealio. Um, and that's all we're interested in here. So this filter does not have any built-in modulation, but that's okay because it has a morph parameter. Um, and you'll see this one goes low pass, um, sort of band pass, high pass, and then notch, um, but it doesn't like shift around quite as much as the Ableton one does and doesn't come back around a low pass at the other end. So it seems like a small difference, but it ends up making a pretty big difference. But uh, what I'm going to do here is similar to what we did before. I'm just going to go ahead and add an LFO to each of these. We want it to be random. But unlike the Ableton one, what's cool about this is a mix parameter. So, you know, by default. You can wind up in scenarios like I described before where it's either entirely low passed or entirely high passed. But with this, you can just like let a little, little bit through. Which can be kind of cool. Um, so yet again, that on its own is decent, but I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this. And that's kind of cool. Um, we end up in scenarios sort of like before where it gets like mostly high pass or mostly low pass and it gets a little fizzy, but that's nothing that we can't fix up with maybe just a touch of distortion. Um, and then some more compression. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and shift it towards the dark side. Maybe even drop the octave. Maybe let some more through. To be honest, these filters are kind of moving a little slow for my liking, but it, it'll be okay. We'll make do with it. Um, then, yeah, I'm just going to do the same uh, compression thing. We are going. And that's much more interesting than just that uh, basic noisy sign patch that we had in the beginning. Um, and yeah, of course, from here, you can do stuff like put it through Dopplers um, to get even more movement out of it. Or yeah, even like add cool stuff like vocoding or whatever, because, you know, that always makes it.
So that's pretty cool. And both of those methods are what I would call like true morphs because the filters are actually morphing. Um, the next ones I'm going to show you is not technically morphing, but it's just like lots of complex filters moving in um, really complex ways. Um, I'm not going to build this one from scratch because it takes freaking forever. But what you're looking at here is a multi-pass uh, preset that I made that's divided up into five bands. And in each band, if you just ignore these things at the bottom real quick, in each band, we can also stop them from grooving <laughs> to be less distracting. Uh, we have a low pass filter followed by a notch filter in both the low bands and then the mid, it's a band pass filter followed by a notch and then the upper ones, it's high pass filters followed by notches. And um, you might be thinking, why put a low pass filter in like a multiband plugin? But what it actually like creates in practice, like if I can sort of draw something up here, um, is like really complex filter shapes. So if we look at um, just these two lower bands here, just focus on these, we have like two low pass filters. So what is that actually doing? Um, this bottom band is going something like this right on this side it's we have the edge the other edge of the uh um how do we get like a bucket shape i used to know how to do this that doesn't matter we have the uh upper edge of this crossover right here so low pass into the crossover into another low pass over here i'm like butchering this horribly um Sort of, it's got like a flat bottom. How do you make the, oh, that's what it is. So it's kind of like this. Um, and then another low pass filter with like another um, flat bottomed bucket over here for the band crossover. Um, combined with a notch filter, which is also doing something, um, two notch filters per band, which is also overlapping. Um, That would look kind of like this. Um, and they're all moving around. So the flat cutoffs are pretty static because we aren't moving these crossover points, but the notches are overlapping with the low pass filters. Um, and it's just creating a lot of really cool, interesting movement. So yeah, what I did is I just made a ton of random modulators, smooth random modulators, each hooked up to, there's one for the cutoff and one for the cue for each of the filters, just to get the shapes really moving and grooving. And then, um, yeah, I made some macro controls to uh, control the speed of each of the modulators. And I'll just shut up and let you listen to it for a second. Sorry, this is the, this is the sound without the processing on. This is the raw sound. <laughs> It's got some movement, but maybe I wanted it to be more interesting and less sort of fizzy crackly. And then like all of these, um, add just a little bit of some kind of OTT on the end of it. Um, goes a very long way. And naturally, since it's saved as a multi-pass preset, um, you can just go ahead and load up the entire thing all over again. <laughs> um, if we go into this little sub thing in here, what did I call this? Multi-band filter morph. Do another one. And then maybe another OTT after that. Uh, we can just copy this guy. Quite goopy, if you ask me. So another sort of variation on that that um, you can do. Again, we're going to be looking snap peep this time uh, and using a parametric EQ instead of multiband individual filters. Um, if you open the filter tab within this, then we use a, a bell curve. Um, in case you didn't know this, if you have like a modulator inside the snap heap and you have like the sub plugin open, like slice EQ in this case, you can just add the modulator to here. 
um, and it'll work. And I've just gone ahead and created um, four bands of this. Uh, whoops, I didn't want to do that one. We basically have, um, I'm going to slow this down so it's not so crazy to look at. We have four peaks um, with the cutoffs and gains being modulated again by uh, random modulators at the bottom there. And uh, I've made it so that each of the peaks, sorry, each of the cutoff frequencies, like um, positive direction, full, pretty much full frequency range. But the gains are capped at like plus or minus plus 10, because otherwise it can get like insane. But this is like a decent amount of movement, I'd say. So on its own, that goes something like this. Uh, let's listen to the dry sound. We've got a different one. Again, kind of distorted, lots to chew on. And with this, um, it's kind of difficult to hear just on its own. So what I'll usually do, again, is just stack it, which is pretty easy to do because, again, it's in Snap Heap. So you can just like sub instantiate tons of these. Um, so I'll make another one or maybe even another one and another one. That's getting pretty slimy, pretty gross. Very tasty. Um, I might even put like a little saturator after this just to, uh, cause we got lots of harsh peaks as these filters are overlapping with each other. And, um, maybe I just, uh, want those peaks to saturate instead of going straight into the limiter. Kind of interesting if you ask me, um, but I'm going to spice it up even more with, um, if you think about it, all these like filters are kind of like, um, they get sort of like in phasey territory. They start sounding like phasers because you kind of have like lots of peaks, sometimes related to each other, sometimes not. Um, but they're like shifting around in maybe a rhythmic fashion. So I made another patch here that was just literally, it's just two phasers um, with a similar sort of modulation setup, modulating the cutoff and the depth, which is just like, if you think about it with the parametric EQ, it's how much gain you're adding per band. Um, and it's doing a similar thing. And then uh, if you stack these on top of each other, then it gets even crazier. Maybe we'll dial it back just a teensy bit. And yeah, that's pretty cool. Tons of movement. Let's just see what that sounds like through the Dopplers again, just to... And I think that's pretty cool. Um, the only other thing I'll show here real quick, maybe if we go back to this phase plant patch, is uh, you can do a similar sort of thing with pretty much any EQ or filter, but one of the ones that I really like to do this with is Shade. I think I already have one. Um, yeah, because with shade, uh, you know, you can do your typical EQ peaks, but you can also do the phasers like built into it and, uh, yeah, like comb flanger combinations and more so than anything, I think just looks pretty, right? <laughs> um, so this is the same sort of deal. Let's just hear what this sounds like. 